When you think of the term pirate, it's likely that the image of a golden age swashbuckler would come to mind. An image straight out of the annals of history, more closely associated with the fictional Pirates of the Caribbean than the reality of the modern day. As much as the media has influenced our view on notorious criminals of the seas over the decades and even centuries, piracy is in fact a very real crime even today, and new generations of pirates operate in waters the world over to this very day. Many of these new groups and societies of modern pirates cause major issues for even the largest of vessels operating in their waters, making some of these regions amongst the most dangerous places for even the most experienced captains to sail. You may be familiar with the pirates that operate around the coastlines of Somalia, for example. These pirates have gained much notoriety in the news and media over recent years, and when we think of modern day pirates, we tend to think of it being localised solely around Somalia. This, however, is far from the truth. Pirates have been known to operate in recent years around both the west and east coast of the Africa continent, as well as in Southeast Asia, and even still the Caribbean itself. Today we will be taking a look at these recent acts of modern piracy. Who are these people terrorising the seas in certain areas of the world? What major acts of piracy have been carried out in recent years as a result of their presence? Finally, what is being done to limit or mitigate these acts of nautical terror? Join us as we explore the terrifying reality of modern day pirates, and what their presence means for those sailing the seas today. Welcome to Walk the Plank. Somali Pirates by a long way, the most infamous group of modern day pirates has to be those operating along the coast of Somalia, a northeast African country situated along the coastal region of the Horn of Africa. Piracy in the waters off the coast of Somalia has been a major issue for shipping vessels since the beginning of the 1990s, when the outbreak of the Somali civil war threw the country into turmoil. Amidst the chaos of the war, the central government of Somalia began to collapse, and groups of people living along the coastlines of the country turned to a life of oceanic crime to get by, and have been a deadly and imposing force in the waters along the Horn of Africa and throughout the wider Indian Ocean for decades. The piracy first sprang to life in the midst of the war when foreign fishing trawlers began emptying Somalia's coastlines of fish. The local mariners, fishermen and sailors who relied on these fish stocks began to attack these trawlers with a view to guarding their native waters and livelihoods. But things quickly escalated out of control. Many of the individuals who took arms up against these ships found that it was profitable to capture the opposition, charging a ransom for their release. This became more and more commonplace and more sailors along Somalia's coastline realised the profitability to be had from capturing foreign shipping vessels in Somalia's waters. This led to local financiers actually beginning to back the piratical activity, providing the pirates with resources to help them succeed, as long as they agreed to split their profits equally. As of the time this video was released, hundreds of vessels have fallen victim to Somali pirates, who typically operate across the Indian Ocean and Arabian Peninsula, and many different nations have been affected by their crimes. Perhaps the most famous of these events was the April 2009 hijacking of the American ship MV Marisk Alabama, led by Captain Richard Phillips. On the 9th of April 2009, a band of four teenage Somali pirates boarded Phillips' cargo ship off the coast of Somalia. Phillips was taken hostage and a siege ensued which, throughout, saw several members of the crew wounded and a bargaining deal involving a pirate that had been captured by the crew. The pirates eventually took Phillips hostage on a lifeboat, a situation which lasted until a few days later on the 12th of April. US Navy SEAL snipers were able to kill three of the pirates aboard the lifeboat, and Phillips was rescued. The sole surviving pirate was sentenced to over 33 years in prison. This scenario was later adapted into a major motion picture starring Tom Hanks playing the famed captain in 2013's Captain Phillips, directed by Paul Greengrass. Pirates in the Gulf of Guinea Perhaps the second most famous region associated with modern day acts of piracy is the Gulf of Guinea, the coastal area that forms the interior angle shape on Africa's west coast. The area stretches from Senegal in the northwest to Angola in the south, and is made up of around 20 different countries. Whilst officially, acts of piracy by US law is defined as maritime crime that takes place on the high seas, much of the crime that takes place in the Gulf of Guinea is committed on national waters, which do in fact belong to certain countries. Piracy has become a much more common occurrence in the region in recent years. 
Whereas in the past, individual sailors who had docked their small vessels would be targeted, modern attacks have seen pirates show more cunning, banding together and systematically forming a plan to target bigger ships that are out on the water. Piracy has in fact in several regions associated with the Gulf of Guinea become a profitable business. Some regions have noted the profitability that piracy can bring and huge networks have been set up to maximise the money made from practical acts around the Gulf. Pirates operating in these lands can draw upon governments, companies, militias and organised crime networks to back their misdeeds, which can make a dangerous combination for vessels sailing through the region. The main reason piracy is so profitable in the Gulf of Guinea is down to the fact that the Gulf is a major location for shipping goods to countries in Africa. Many pirates take aim at ships carrying petroleum to assist with illegal oil bunkering in the region. Such attacks have become commonplace around the beginning of the 2010s, with around 64 isolated incidents taking place on vessels in the Gulf of Guinea between 2010 and 2011. Major trade routes linking Europe and North America with countries such as Nigeria, Ghana and the Democratic Republic of Congo have been affected, and this has continued into recent years. Pirates still go through considerable effort to hijack ships and take their cargo, with many maritime crimes taking place throughout the following decade, and the problem only seems to be getting worse in recent years. Take the year 2020 alone, for instance. Here we had over 130 sailors kidnapped by pirates operating in the Gulf of Guinea. This overtook the previous year's record of 121. Nigeria seems to be the main hotspot for such activities with by far the most attempted and actual attacks year on year. Countries who have had their crews affected by practical acts in the Gulf of Guinea include France, Panama, the United Kingdom, Greece, Singapore, Luxembourg, China, Italy, Liberia, Norway, Portugal, Denmark, and even Nigeria itself. Southeast Asia Two locations in Southeast Asia are hotspots for modern day piracy. The first of these is the Strait of Malacca, a thin stretch of water separating Indonesia from mainland Malaysia, and the second are both the Salu and Celebus Seas, two closely connected bodies of coastal waters along the north and east coasts of Borneo, an island containing parts of both Malaysia and Indonesia. The Strait of Malacca in particular has been the site of many acts of piracy over the years, as it geographically forms a thin, snake-like passageway of water separating two major landmasses. In the midst of the strait are thousands of small islets and mouths of many rivers, providing plenty of cover for pirates planning to attack passing vessels. While attacks are not as commonplace on the Strait of Malacca as they used to be, a significant number of cargo ships have been attacked by pirates in recent years. Across the mid-2000s, several hundred ships fell victim to attacks from pirates who brandished guns and machetes and who typically attack under cover of darkness to sneak up on their quarries. The Salu and Celebes Seas, on the other hand, cover around 1 million square kilometres of water and have been the focus of piratical attacks since pre-colonial times. These seas are enclosed by land and have, over the years, seen kidnappings, killings, drug trades, human trafficking, and assaults on ships. These issues have persisted into the modern day, with many attacks in recent years focusing on kidnapping sailors aboard foreign vessels for ransom money. Both tugboats and fishing vessels are typically targeted in this manner, and much of the money made is thought to contribute to a group known as Abu Sayyaf, a Filipino extremist group of jihadist militants. The reason for such a high number of attacks around insular Southeast Asia comes down to the presence of such threatening groups, combined with the lack of maritime law enforcement in the regions. Corruption amongst governments and law enforcement does no favours, and many people turn to a life of maritime crime due to poor economic conditions in nations around the region. Although piracy has greatly reduced in frequency in Southeast Asia from decades gone by, it is still a very real threat to those sailing around the region. The Caribbean and Central America The legendary hub of the Golden Age of Piracy is still very much in use today. Thought to be a direct impact of the socio-economic crisis in Bolivarian Venezuela, many individuals turn to a life of maritime crime as a result of hyperinflation, disease, poverty and starvation, in desperate attempts to make a quick fortune to feed themselves. Fishermen and sailors who already know their way around the seas and have access to vessels are known to become affiliated with piracy throughout the Caribbean in modern times, and the area remains one of the bloodiest regions for modern piracy, with frequent attacks and killings. Much of this modern Caribbean piracy can be traced to the northern coastline of Venezuela, situated in the northern regions of South America. 
Crimes committed by these pirates consist of theft, drug smuggling, human trafficking, and even murder. Once great fishing fleets have been reduced to almost nothing in the face of piracy, and some pirates have resorted to targeting luxury yachts to make their fortune. In Venezuela, this is a massive crisis, which only seems to be worsening as the socio-economic and political climates decline. Piracy is also a common occurrence in Falcon Lake, a 100 kilometer long reservoir on the Rio Grande River between Texas in the United States and Tamaulipas in Mexico. All of the attacks in the region have been associated with the Los Zetas Cartel, a Mexican criminal syndicate known for smuggling huge quantities of drugs through the region. The pirates target fishermen and their vessels operating on the reservoir, primarily on the Mexican side of the water, and have committed a litany of crimes including assaults, shootings, kidnapping, and drug smuggling. Tackling Modern Day Piracy Piracy is indeed still a major issue the world over, and many nations have been impacted by the crimes committed by pirates across various seas. As such, the matter has been the subject of discussion at global meetings with the United Nations, which have seen multiple countries banding together to tackle piracy with a combined power. In Somalia, for example, four international naval task forces patrol the region in search of pirates with a view to stopping them entirely. These forces enter and leave the region after various time periods and are manned by representatives from over 20 different nations. On top of this, the Somali government have upped the number of counter-piracy vessels patrolling their waters, and have been joined by army ships from the Chinese People's Liberation Army. China, having had numerous ships targeted by Somali pirates over the years, have actually opened their first overseas military base on the coast of Djibouti, a neighbouring nation to the north of Somalia. However, you would have thought that a place called something like Djibouti would actually attract pirates. There is now plenty of firepower on the coast of the Horn of Africa, making it a risky decision for pirates to attack. Meanwhile, to combat piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, Nigeria and Benin have launched Operation Prosperity, a 2011 project focusing on securing the area, making it safe for cargo vessels to pass. The plan consisted of Nigeria manning several vessels that would aim to target the pirates in the waters, while Benin would open its waters for these vessels to enter, providing a mutual defence against a mutual threat. Likewise, in Southeast Asia, multiple nations have banded together to mitigate the threats posed by pirates. Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore have all contributed to securing the area with military ships. But governments from Malaysia and Indonesia have refused foreign engagement to support this agreement. India eventually joined in the agreement in 2006, and several ships now patrol the area to tackle the pirate menace. With continued support from governments who wish to put a stop to the problems caused by pirates the world over, perhaps eventually our oceans will be entirely safe. We still have a long way to go, and it will take more contributions from key players on the world stage before the threat is completely stamped out, but these initial schemes to end modern piracy are slowly succeeding. Overall trends show that numbers of pirate attacks are dropping in key locations such as Southeast Asia, and as a result of the military presence, less people are considering taking up piracy in the first place. Ideally, down the line, piracy will remain a thing of the past. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank, and I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!